Hi guys, welcome to G and J all day. We're here today to talk to you guys about our 90 gallon fish tank. But this is a very special episode because it is our first episode ever on YouTube on our channel. Um, so we want to tell you guys a little bit about us before we begin. My name is Gretchen, cameraman. My boyfriend's name is... Jake. <laughs> and we just have a lot of hobbies that we love to do together, and we think that they're worth videotaping and sharing with you guys. So our hobby of fish keeping is the first episode we're going to do, but we're going to talk about lots of other stuff. We have a baby bearded dragon his name is Ziggy we have a pit bull his name is Bear and we have lots of fish and this is not our only tank so this episode we're going to just focus on this first fish tank let's get started so right away we have Bonnie who loves to be in front of the camera she is an angel fish and um, she came with one of our first tanks we ever got we had another angel fish named Clyde, of course, and he was very violent, so we had to get rid of him. And Bonnie can be kind of temperamental sometimes. She thinks like she can just peck at anybody she wants, but it's not really acceptable. In this back corner over here, we have a shot of one of our Geophagus Balzani, which we have three of those, two female, one male, and the male is beautiful. He has that spotting on his fins, He's more colorful than the females are, and he always will be colorful, more colorful. Right behind him, under the cave, we have Chilo, the red spotted Severum. He is so pretty, and he's doing good in this tank. We just got him probably a couple weeks ago, but he's pretty friendly, and he seems to get along with everyone fine. On the rock, we have Megalodon, and he's an iridescent shark. Catfish. Or doesn't catfish, whatevs. But he is actually a bottom feeder. He'll get up to like a foot long or maybe even up to 18 inches. But quick little story about him. The other day we took him back to the pet store because previously we had about 19 tetras in this tank. And we were told that Megalodon would eat them all. And he is a shark, so we believed it. And put him in a bag, took him back to the store... Had him on the counter, he was ready to go back, and we never ended up getting rid of him because the owner said that if we keep him from a young age, that he will not eat our tetras. So you can see kind of swimming around him, there's two more of these Geophagus Balzani, the two female, and it's kind of interesting because they kind of go at it. So I'm not sure if they're trying to mate or what's up with that, but there goes Brad. He's like, peace. Brad is our electric blue acara, and we kind of assume all the genders of our fish unless we actually know a way to tell, but as a lot of you know, that can be really difficult, so yeah, we like to give our fish like human names too, because it's kind of funny, so Brad, when we bought him, over here is a good shot of him, we purchased him, and he was a dark blue and black, and he kind of looked like a painting in my opinion. And, um, yeah, we brought him home, and a couple days later, he turned to this pastel blue, which is still very pretty. You can see he has that really nice, solid strip of orange on his top fin, but we bought him and brought him here, and he lost all his color, so we thought he was definitely dying. So we were told that when they lose their color like that, it means that they're actually comfortable and are the dominant one of the tank. He feels like he's the boss, he calls all the shots, and he doesn't need to look pretty to scare off all the other fish, apparently. So, low-key, you want to get a fish that will make his colors come out again. But that's kind of mean, because he thinks he's lost up right now. But we want his color to come out. But he's still really pretty. And then, we got two other stars of the show, but they like to hide. And those two stars are our bristlenose Pleco. His name's Bro. He's a cutie pie. And we got Gas Pedal the Loach. He's a dojo loach, and I don't like him, and Jake loves him, so I guess it's acceptable. 
I don't know where he is. Last time we tried filming this footage, he was MIA as well. So maybe the YouTube life isn't meant for him, but he's going to get pretty big. He'll probably get how big? I don't know, six inches. Six inches. I don't know. I don't like him, guys. I think loaches and eels are creepy, but Jake really likes them. He thinks they're cool. A lot of people do. And this is some live rock. It's actually three different pieces. One, two, and three that we stacked up to make into this cave. I love this centerpiece. It really, it's just pretty. I love it. And when we got it, it was white. So now it's getting some uh, character, if you will. So that's it for the inside. Also wouldn't recommend putting sand substrate in a 90 gallon tank, personal opinion. But on the top here, we have these glass lids. Um, they just are better looking, we think. They do collect a lot of this condensation across the top, but it doesn't really affect how it really looks. I mean, we clean it off sometimes. It will get dirty, so you might want to clean it here and there, but it has this nice opening in the back. It's probably about an inch and a half. Um, so all of the wires can come out, and it will be hidden in the back. It's nice. We have a black cover on the tank. We bought it. didn't have anything like that. We like the black. It makes the fish pop. It's all personal preference. Then we have these two heaters on either side of the tank and our power head we have just pushing upward just for the flow. Um, we have this light, it is our Fluval Sky that we bought for our first 29 gallon tank. It has the weather controls on it, all different types of beautiful colors. We would really like to upgrade our lighting so we can do some plants in here because this is not the right light for plants. but. So far, it's been a good light. Jake dropped it in the water while it was still on, put his hand in the tank. I freaked out, and he grabbed it out. No one got electrocuted, but I would not recommend putting your hand in the tank once you drop electronics in people or whatever. So, yeah. And then lastly, over here is our filter. And it sucks. It doesn't suck really bad, but honestly it, it actually does suck it sucks <laughs> a lot of water yeah it does that so a canister filter is the way you guys want to go we made the mistake of impulse buying this filter right away because it was cheaper and we needed it that's bad to admit to but um we're definitely getting the fx6 canister filter by who fluval fluval so because of this filter i say it sucks not only does it suck water I mentioned earlier how we, you should not do sand substrate in the bottom of the tank because now we have a lot of problems with the, the tank looking cloudy. We had to go and buy these sponges, if you will. Um, we have one in the front, one in the back. Back here, because this is the filter with this little bag in it, and then it has all those bio rocks. And it's just a lot. It will never really pay itself off. It never will in a canister filter. is more expensive, but it will pay itself off. So that's the filter, and this is a Tidal 110, guys. Um, it runs up to uh, 110 gallons, so it's not that it doesn't give us enough flowage, it's just that we have the sand substrate, which makes a lot of stuff much harder for us. But I want to thank you guys for watching today, and um, you better come back to watch our other videos because this is not our only fish tank, and we want to share our life with you guys. That was a sneak peek, I guess. But this is our 90-gallon tank, fresh water. I don't even think I said that once, but for you people who don't know, this is fresh water. Um, we do want to get into salt water one day, but this is what we're doing now. So if you guys want to keep up with us and our fish, then continue to follow. Also, one last thing. Don't judge us that our tank is dirty because it is cycling right now, okay, people? It is cycling. But thank you guys for watching today and... Say bye to our fish.